Hello, this is our self-converted Sprinter camper van. One of the things we added to our van was a diesel heater. It's an S-Bar D2. It's under the passenger seat here. It's been great. However, recently it's been kind of having trouble firing up and it sometimes belches white smoke. We've done a few things to try and fix that problem. I think we finally got it fixed, but if you missed it, we had a video we did the first step, which is the easiest step, replacing the fuel filter. And I recommend you check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, we'll link it right here, and it's also linked in the description below. Uh, we did all that. We thought we had fixed the problem, so we just went with it. We went with it and it went about two weeks and then it started smoking again and having trouble firing up. So we're gonna dig into it, we're gonna take it apart and we're gonna replace the atomizer screen and the igniter. I'll show you more about these once we get inside. But right now we gotta take the seat off and get in there. Oh, and Chewy wanted to say hello. This is our friend's dog, this is Chewy and his work here is done. Bye Chewy. <laughs> okay. So we'll get the seat taken off and I'll show you how we're gonna do this. Okay, I'm down on the floor on the driver's side. Um, we're gonna be taking the passenger seat off, obviously, but one thing we gotta be concerned about because it has an airbag, we wanna, we have to disconnect this wire, but before we do, we are going to disconnect the battery. So this is a Sprinter van and it has this nice, very easy clip right here, just by the gas pedal, we just, squeeze that little red button down and pull it off and the battery's disconnected. So we do that for two reasons. One, because we don't want a spark to accidentally set off the airbag while the seat is unbolted. That could be catastrophe. Uh, number two, it could throw a code if the battery is still on and then we'd have to go to the dealer and pay them to remove the code. So it's just easier to pop this thing off. So that's the first thing we do. And just like that, we're ready to go. Now we can disconnect that wire and take the seat off. Now there's this nice little foam cover that just fits in place with these little tabs. We pull that out of the way. And here's our heater. So to get into the heater, we start at the intake end and we just unscrew this little cover here and it comes off and then we can flip these little tabs up and pull it back. So what I did is I flipped these tabs up, these snap down onto a little tab here and then that comes right off. Okay and right in here is what we're replacing this guy's gonna replace it, so we're gonna have a new one of these in there. But before we can, we gotta get this screw out. All right, we need to take this part off. It's held in place with a T20 screw. So we'll just get that out of there like that. Okay, once we've got the screw out, we squeeze these two little tabs together, and that allows us to pull this assembly up and out of here. And we'll bring this wire with it. And what we want to do is gently pull these wires out of here. Like that. Once we've taken this out, we don't need to worry too much about which direction it was because there's only one way it can go in. It has this little diagonal cut off of this plug. So it'll go in this way. It will not go in that way. So, the next thing is to pull this rubber boot off of here very gently because the igniter itself is quite delicate. I'm going to push that back like that. There we go. Our igniter came with this installation socket. It's a deep socket. It has a slot here to accommodate these wires. So, if we put the wires through the slot like that, and put the socket down on there. Now we can get something in there and turn that sucker. Like this. Very gently again, because this thing's delicate. And there. 
there's the old igniter yeah there's a bit of funk on there that's probably part of what's been causing our smoking problem but the worst problem is going to be even deeper down in with the atomizer screen so we'll get that pick again I think I know what part of our problem is this atomizer screen is stuck in there really good I can't hardly get it out of there got some long nose pliers to reach in here and try to pull it but I need the I need the skinny long nose pliers and I don't have them and I can't get on this thing I've pulled a few pieces of it out it should not be stuck that bad in here and so I think that's a bunch of carbon in there so I think it's going to come out in little shreds okay well it's been quite an ordeal here trying to get this thing out but we finally got it and that is our old mangled atomizer screen that we're going to replace but before we do we are going to clean this out real good with a pick so we get our angled pick we want to get especially over here on the hole on that side if you look down there you can see the pick sticking out through the hole we want that cleaned and then we just want to try and clean up as much of this carbon off of here as we can and get whatever gunk out of there we can so yeah that thing's pretty well plugged up down at the bottom there okay so we're going to put the new atomizer screen back in notice it's got three welds on one side we want to make sure those are facing away from that inlet hole the inlet hole is what you saw the pick go through here that's where all the air comes in that gets burned in this thing so we don't want these welds to plug that hole so we're going to put them in this way and we just shove this thing down just like that and when that bottoms out it's all the way in and there we are so now putting it back together is just the opposite of what we did to take it apart we're going to start with our new igniter and put that in okay that's back in i'm going to push the boot back and down in there good and snug like that we we'll take this plug plug it into this guy good and tight once that's back in there we'll grab this green and blue and brown and white wire and they go inside this little tab here to hold them out of the way hold that with one hand and I'm going to put this rubber grommet back into the plastic heater housing down here good and tight like that and then this can come back down snap together like that then I'll put the mounting screw back in and just a real gentle little like that then the housing goes back on the top we make sure this piece slides under this edge like that and then we make sure the sides align correctly and it goes down flat and also into this grommet and then we'd like to hear a little snap when these tabs on the end go back into place we take the in, intake screen put it on the end screw it back on and we're back in business 
Okay, so we put the heater all back together. We put the swivel adapter back on. We replaced the seat. Everything's back the way it was. The one thing I wish we would have done while we were in there before we replaced that atomizer screen is got a straight wire brush, like a, like a pipe cleaner or something like that to just ream out that chamber. But I didn't have one of those available. So the next best thing was we just cranked the thermostat. So we got it all assembled and we just ran it on like 95 degrees at the thermostat. And we let it go for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. And just cooked all that carbon out of there. This time I really think we got it fixed. That was about three weeks ago and it's been working fine ever since. Okay, so the next video in this series, we're going to install a high altitude kit that will prevent this problem from happening in the future. We're pretty certain that because we were in the Rocky Mountains last winter up above 7,000 feet and running our heater quite often, we think that's where the carbon buildup came from. So watch this channel for that video coming in the future. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe. That would really help us out. And we're gonna continue doing more videos like this, including travel videos, and we do food videos as well. And we'd love to see you on the next one. So thanks so much. We'll see you next time.